We're going to be palpating the temporal bone next. So temporal bone, as a general, is right in this area here. It has quite a few other connections to bones that we're going to be discussing, kind of what bones are around it. Uh, we won't go in depth on too many kind of the sutures in this one because most of them are not palpable. Um, but we are definitely going to be pointing out a lot of bony landmarks as we go through the temporal bone here. I'm going to start a little bit more towards the back um, and try to find, again, a landmark that if you've watched previous videos on the skull, the temporal fossa. So this is the temporal bone and the temporal fossa. So a very quick recap, I won't go through everything in detail. We have a frontal bone here, we have parietal bone here, and then it starts to drop down onto the temporal bone. I'd like to point out that the temporal fossa goes behind the ear and it actually goes underneath the ear. So if you're palpating superior and posterior to the ear and you ask your body to clench their teeth a few times, you will quite easily feel temporalis moving in the temporal fossa through this location. So temporal fossa technically is made up of four bones. That was one, two, three, and then the fourth one is going to be the sphenoid bone, a little bit more anterior. But this is often the temporal fossa gets its name for temporalis, and again, that muscle. So that's going to be above the ear here. I'm going to turn the head slightly and kind of show you behind the ear. So as we pull the ear forward, this landmark right in here is known as the mastoid process. So it's quite easy for you to grab. And a muscle that I'm kind of outlining right now is sternocleidomastoid. So that's going right up and inserting into this mastoid process. You also have two other muscles utilizing it as an attachment too. So this is something you should definitely get to know. As I go kind of posterior to it, I'm going to point this out on the ear by pulling on her ear. So this is going to get a little bit tricky. And let's see, wait for the camera to zoom in a little bit. But as I pull in, we're actually seeing a little bit of this fiber coming off the back of the ear. I'll stress it a little bit. So this is known as your auricularis posterior. It's a muscle that kind of pulls the ear back. And it is originating, depending on your source, on something called the mastoid area or part. So I'm just pointing that out that this is the process and a little bit more superior towards the occipital bone in here is the mastoid area or part. So that's kind of directly in line with this posterior auricularis muscle. So sometimes that needs to be mentioned in reference. Okay, I'm just gonna lift up her ear a little bit. If I go in front of this mastoid process directly below the ear, I'm gonna take some time, I'm not gonna to push too hard, but underneath and in this location is known as your styloid process. So you have this small bony projection that's sticking down. This is for your stylohyoid muscle. So if you're wanting to confirm this one, you could ask your person to swallow, which is one of the main functions of the hyoids as a group as they help maneuver the hyoid bone during swallowing. So the styloid process tucked up underneath here. We're gonna bring the head back to a neutral. Now we're not sticking our fingers inside people's ears as much as you might like to, but instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna find this little flap of skin. Some people will call this the tragus. So you might hear of a tragus piercing. And I'm going to take that skin and I'm gonna cover over top of her ear hole. So the tragus and we cover it and the outer ear hole has two names known as the external acoustic meatus or meatus, or the external auditory, AU auditory meatus. So again, instead of sticking your finger inside and plugging it, we're just taking this flap of skin and covering over top of it. So that's gonna be, again, obviously closing the ear hole. For me, that's an easy way to confirm it instead of sticking an object inside. Just anterior to this tragus and the skin is going to be the beginning of this zygomatic arch, and then there's a few more bony landmarks around this. So again, we'll come back and explain them kind of one by one, but I'm gonna start with the arch. So the zygomatic bone, which is the cheek bone here, is going to be projecting posteriorly towards the temporal, and then the temporal is gonna be kind of pushing forward, and they kind of meet somewhat in the middle, right around this location at their own suture point but this whole area is called the zygomatic arch. So the temporal bone has what's known as a zygomatic portion going forward, 
and then the zygomatic bone has a branch going back towards the temporal. So you might see and hear those two, or you might just call it the whole thing a zygomatic arch, but please know the posterior part is mainly made up of the temporal. Just below that, I'm starting to feel kind of a round ball-like structure. And this is actually the head of the mandible. It has a couple other names as well, so you might hear this as the condyle or condylar process, versus in front of it, this is the coronoid process. So to confirm that I am on the head of this mandible, I'm actually gonna get her to open her mouth. So as she opens her mouth, I can easily feel that bone move, and as you close, it goes back up in place. Let's do that nice and slow again. You'll feel it go right past my finger as it's wiggling a little bit. And then again, close as it goes past. So that is the head going back up into the fossa of this. So this is the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. As this mandible, the head of it is going back inside. So you can't really feel the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone because it has the condyle inside of it. But that would be deep to this location. Next, along this arch, there's going to be something called the articular tubercle. So I need to find that condyle of the head and I'm gonna to drop to the inferior surface of the zygomatic arch just in front of it. And there's gonna be just basically a bump on the bone that's sticking inferior, a tubercle. As a person opens their mouth, the head is going to drop inferior and translate forward as it goes past this articular tubercle. As they close their mouth, it goes past and then goes back up and in. If you've looked in-depthly at the joint structure of the TMJ, temporal mandibular joint, you will know there's a disc in there as well, an articular disc, and this is what's helping move the head and that disc back and forth as you open and close. So that might be something you want to further look into, but for now, this is the articular tubercle just in front of that mandibular fossa. Working our way again along this zygomatic arch. Now the arch itself is kind of hard for you to see just to feel it this way, but what you're not seeing is if my finger was the arch, then the temporalis muscle is actually going underneath it. So the arch is more visually seen from looking up and down on it as the temporalis goes underneath this arch. So again, that's gonna be part of the temporal bone. So quite a bit going on with the temporal bone. Make sure you go through this once or twice and get all of those landmarks down.